Hello, welcome to Redout. I get asked a lot of the same questions from new players of Redout. I thought I'd just talk you through the very basics of the game. Starting with, uh, what ship do I pick? Uh, the answer is probably the Lunari right here because it has the best handling in the game. If you're looking for something a little more balanced, it would be the ESA. And nine times out of ten, the best ship in the entire game is the Suha. But if you're starting out, you really want the handling, so I would pick the Lunari. One thing that a lot of new players don't realise is you can upgrade your ships, and indeed you should because it makes a big difference. Um, here we are, you can upgrade the turbines, the magnets, structure and energy. So don't forget to do that while you're doing the career mode, it's something that new players tend to overlook. Most players do know about the power-ups, but I'll talk you through them anyway. Um, you can have an active one and a passive one. The active ones you need energy for. It'll go from your energy pool. I'm going to use the turbo boost there. The passive ones you effectively get for free. They just work all of the time. Um, if you're a complete newcomer, you might like the magnetic stabilizer because that will improve your handling even more as you're getting used to the controls. Um, as you develop with the game, you'll probably want the augmented propeller because in later stages you'll find out if the AI has one of these, it'll just leave you in its dust. So those are two important ones. I'm not actually going to have one while I'm going through this because I don't actually want to go too fast. I want you to be able to see what I'm actually doing. And I'm going to do a few laps of Kalima here and uh, just discuss the actual controls of the game. Here we are in Cairo, in Kalima, the very first track. Probably have figured out the absolute basics, which is of course you need to hold the accelerator button to move forwards. You do have brakes, you won't be using them very often. And the thing that most players ask is, how do I strafe? If you're unfamiliar with um, strafing, I usually say, think of it like you're driving a motorcycle. Now, a motorcycle doesn't just turn in the corners, it also has to lean into the corners. So think of your strafing like you're leaning into a corner. And you're gonna need it for the sharper ones, you'll be using it a lot. If you're using Redout's default control scheme with your joypad, the strafe is on your right stick the left and right up there. Uh, the right stick will also have your pitch, that's the up and down. And if you are an F0 player, however, you might prefer to um, check out some of the other control schemes. Some players don't realise there are alternative control schemes. I prefer Classic, which, as I said, if you're an F0 player, this will be familiar to you. This moves the strafing to the shoulder buttons, a la F0. And as I mentioned, the default red out, it's on the right stick. And a lot of people say, um, is the keyboard viable? And they seem to assume it isn't. Um, actually, two of the best players I've ever met, um, Cow Plus Plus and Decade, both use the keyboard, and there's a very good reason for that. The keyboard is much more responsive than the joypad, for a very good reason that some of the joypad buttons are analog. And in a game like Redout, every split second counts. So the split second it counts to fully press down an analog button is a split second you're not racing. So actually there's an argument that the keyboard is much better for this game. But I imagine that a lot of people, especially when they're starting out, will want the joypad. But just to point out, there are indeed several modes which you can access here in options. And as an old F-Zero player, I do prefer the classic, so I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to talk some more about strafing, um, using the first corner in Kalima here for some practice. Um, the common way to strafe is to strafe in the same direction that you're taking the corner. As I'll do here, yep, just strafing in the same direction. That's a normal way to take it. However, you can also do drift turns in Red Out. That's when you strafe in the opposite direction to the corner. And then you'll just sort of gently swing the rear of your craft out and take it as a drift. I'll demonstrate it. There, that's a drift. And one technique that um, is useful to know is that you can do a sort of a hairpin turn, I tend to call it, which is when you initially drift into a corner, but then switch and then stra start strafing into the corner. And that allows you to take things um, really quite tight, which is why we call it the hairpin turn, because hairpins are where it's most useful. So I'll try and pull one off here. Drifting and then opposite strafe corner as well. That was quite 
tight as you saw. Obviously, I'm not actually trying to take that corner. I'm just demonstrating the motion. One more time. So, drift and then strafe into the corner as well. And you can see how tight I took that turn there. And that's the principle behind it. Um, do practice your combination of strafing and turning. Uh, it something that you will come to you naturally with practice so just stick at it um, one other mechanic I should explain while I'm here is um, your mini boost you can see my energy pool it's the blue bar on the right of my craft there and at any time you can use your boost as such to just boost long and grab some speed um, you can use the entire pool if you want to or more commonly I tend to do just little flicks of the boost which are very useful for getting your speed back up when you've taken a corner perhaps not perfectly just give it a, a little lick of the boost to get you back up to speed and i have my active power up turbo boost which steals all of the energy from my energy pool to power it and that gives me a, a big boost of speed so that was the active power up i used there but the mini boost you can use at all times as much or as little as you want and here's the Kalima loop. And if you don't pitch your nose up, you will scrape your nose along the ground here. That's what happened there. All the sparks flying. Um, so yeah, you need to pitch your nose up. Like so. And then you'll take it nice and smooth. And you'll meet several corners in Red Out where you will have to pitch and steer at the same time. So don't forget to pay attention to what your nose is doing. If you're going uphill, your nose needs to be pointed up, and if you're going downhill, you'll need to point your nose down. So, one more time, pitching back. There we go. No problem. It will become second nature to you, and you won't have to think about it once you've been practicing for a while. There you go, get my turbo boost again. All the energy is gone. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is um, your craft can heal itself if you take damage by scraping against the walls like such. Did myself some damage there. It's the green bar on the right of my uh, my left of my craft is the health. And you can see there my ship is healing itself. Um, quite slowly though and if you keep bouncing off the walls the repair routine won't activate. However there is an active power up which is the repair drone, which I should have mentioned earlier. Very useful for newcomers. Uh, here it is. Uh, you can activate this to heal your craft up much faster, but it will need energy from your energy pool. And you can toggle that on and off as you like. And um, that's going to be useful in tracks like Alaska, which tend to be quite brutal. You'll be banging into walls all over the place in Alaska. And um, that's basically it for the basics. Um, on the more challenging tracks, do not forget your pitching. You, you can't just um, steer into hills. You will need to put your nose up for them. And as I said, you also want to practice with your strafing. You can strafe in the same direction as the corner if you want to take it tight. If you want to do a drift, you strafe in the opposite direction to the corner. And if you want to do that hairpin technique I was talking about, that's an initial drift followed by the strafing into the corner quite tightly and that's useful for quite a few spots in the game but it's, it's something to play around with and get the hang of. That's it for this video, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you another time. Goodbye!